I was speaking about the value of a two pence piece, which um, because I feel very passionately that people don't really appreciate the cash in their pocket. I mean, as in terms of its metals, and it's actually. Um, I didn't really talk about it, but <laughs> it's actually a little mini history of a civilization in your pocket, right? Because the one and two p of copper, although these days they're also steel, and then you've got bronze, five and ten p's, so you've got the bronze age, the copper age. You've got um, the iron and steel age are embodied in in the one and two p nowadays. After post nineteen ninety two, they are now made of steel with a copper coating, and so it's funny, isn't it? Because you're kind of bored, you're sitting somewhere and you might fiddle with your phone but actually if you just look at your cash in your pocket you see the queen and the queen <laughs> the queen you know th this whole business about why you have a head of state on a coin it's it's very old and it's about pr and before any of these tech twitter technologies were around you had coins so coins in a sense are the earliest form of twitter but only one person had access to a twitter account and everyone else had to just read their twitters which were the little bits of text. Actually, I wish I'd said that now. That's quite good. Well, there's sort of two types of experiments, aren't there? Because the sort of experiments I do, which are to try and find ways of making self-healing materials, and in a sense, the one I want to do is the one that works. <laughs> so I kind of want to make materials that heal. So I want to make a phone or a car or a plane heal itself. Um, um, but of course you just don't, you know, that, that kind of experiment is sort of ongoing and there are a thousand people around the world. So I could say that, but I won't. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel you're looking for one that will ratify some theory, which no one has ever ratified before, uh, maybe. Um, and what would that be? Um, that's a good question. Um, yeah. I feel like it should be something to do with space. But I, I, don't, I can't really put my finger on what it should be. A mission? Yeah, I mean, I would love to go to Mars. I mean, I would love to, to be an astronaut going to Mars and back. I mean, I would just love to do that. I mean, yeah, astronaut first, scientist, if you can't be an astronaut, I think that's right. The camp I fall into. Um, Biggest science news story, yeah. Um, well, it's obviously the fast and light neutrino, and I mean the physicists have been kind of playing with their big toys, haven't they? Um, um, from my perspective, material science, um, there's been a lot of very interesting stuff, which um, has been coming through with invisibility shields. So invisibility shields, until about a few years ago, were thought to be impossible. Now, then they were demonstrated to be possible, and there was this thing called a metamaterial that could make them. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> people are making them left, right, and center. And um, uh, this year was the first year that people made ones that worked for visible light. <laughs> I know that sounds obvious, that they should work for visible light. But anyway, they, had been, they worked for microwaves before, and now they work for visible light. So it's pretty amazing. I mean, they're coming. That's the funny thing. You know that thing where you're, you know, you're in the middle of a town, and there's this enormous block of flats that, that bars your view of St. Paul's? In the future, we'll be able to put an invisibility shield around it, and you'll better see St. Paul's. It'll be lovely. There'll be no restricted access by sight lines in the city. 